So math can be one of the hardest curriculums to really nail down and stick with uh, over the course of time. We've had quite a few curriculums come through the door uh, in our four years of homeschooling and let's see, we've tried Good and the Beautiful, the old version. We have done master books up through level two, some Simply Charlotte Mason and Christian Light Education. And that is the one that I'm gonna be talking about today and why I have decided that this is the math for us and why I love it so much. So to start off, if you don't know what Christian Light is, it's a Mennonite curriculum and it is very affordable. The teacher's manuals, let's see, there are two for each level, at least in the younger grades. I think as you get older, there might be only one, but um, this is what they look like. And these are about $10 a piece for each book. And then each grade has these little workbooks. They're called light units. There are 10 light units for each level. And these used to be about $3.50 a piece, but I just noticed as I bought two more for my son um, that they've gone up to $4.95, which is still fairly affordable for a math curriculum. So these start very, very, very simply with just numbers and very simple addition problems right off the start. The teacher's guide um, has some audio that you're like dictating to them questions based on some of their problems. Also works on following directions. So for instance, this, uh, he was told to draw however many circles, color the fourth one, this color, get the fifth one, that one, and put an X in whatever. This one is Math 1, booklets 101 to 105. So that refers to these booklets. They are numbered. This one is 102. Okay, so it starts off with an introduction. It talks about the learning facts, the flashcard system, speed drills, which are at the end of each book. Talks about accounting chart, money, money cups, quizzes, tests, and um, just gives an overall of how the thing works. So Math 101 starts here. And the teacher's guide is super easy to work with, easy to follow, and it starts off with some new skills and concepts that they'll be learning, along with what you need for your class. Now this is set up for like a Mennonite school, so like a teacher, but it totally works for homeschool very, very easily. And uh, is very very simple to follow and this is a Christian curriculum so it does reference God they have new concepts that they introduce and then once that is done they have an I can do this section and this is this is all stuff that your child has already learned and is just practicing this is the spiral curriculum so it goes back and reviews uh, things a lot of times but it's not like a boring review where it's just drudgery in my mind they have so much variety when it comes to the different things that they're asking your child to do and that I can remember that it breaks it up and it's not this monotonous ugh, you know I will say in level one because your children are learning their facts their addition and subtraction facts there are a lot of those that can be you know repeated they do break it up with a few other things in here but I, there are quite a few um, facts areas that they practice on. In level two, I haven't noticed that as much. They do have like, you know, bigger addition problems and things like that, but um, their facts, their simple facts and stuff really get pounded into their head in level one. Okay, so the progression of level one, like I said, starts out very, very simply with just learning your numbers, following some directions, very simple addition problems, ordinal numbers, and things like that. One thing that I really love about this curriculum is that they introduce word problems so early 
that they're not scary. I was scared of word problems as a kid. I hated them. I never could understand them. They stressed me out. And it took me a long time to finally, you know, get it. Well, they introduced word problems incredibly early. Um, lesson four. It is very simple. It gets your kid to think practically. My first grader started out needing that concrete visual in his head um, for addition. He couldn't, I couldn't just say, hey, what's two plus three and have him figure that out. So I would say, there are two cows in the field and we added three more cows to the field. So now how many cows do we have? And then he would be able to figure it out and say five. Well, these uh, word problems really help that visual uh, solidarity start so early. So the example of the problem here, I'll just go ahead and read it. Debbie Duck was swimming alone on the pond. Mama Duck came to swim with her. How many ducks were swimming on the pond? Very simple. As we progress here, we start working on the place value once you get into tens and it shows like tens and ones, how many tens, how many ones. And this has been really good for my son. He's understood it, no problem. So that's book one. I'll give you a little taste of what book two looks like here. Um, it's all the same uh, format, but we've got, it always starts with the numbers here and like different ways of making that number your story problems. This here is audio. That means that I will be calling out numbers that he needs to write down. This is an instructional thing. Uh, numbers before and after, some simple problems. Towards the end of this book here, we've got greater than, less than. They work on number lines. He really likes these. He thinks that they're fun to like write the number that <laughs> the little object is on the number line. Um, there's just such a big variety in these books. So it talks about twin facts, opposite facts, so that your kids understand those. And at the end of each book, book one started this at the very last two lessons. Um, they introduced them to speed drills. And speed drills are just a quick little set of problems to get them to master their facts. And my son likes to be timed. Some kids do, some kids don't. Um, my oldest, when he went through this, he liked to be timed at first, but as the problems were a little bit harder because he hadn't memorized them yet, I didn't, I didn't bother timing him because I just wanted him to do them, to learn them and not be like stressed out that he wasn't going to get them right or do them right or something like that. So it's, I just, I have them do it as extra practice more or less. Um, if they want me to time them, I will, but it's not that, it's not that big of a deal to me if it's timed. Um, the only other book that I have for level one right now is 103. I have gotten rid of all my oldest son's books just recently. I took out the tests, kept those for reference later on, but um, they go into money fairly early on, which I really like. Counting by tens and fives and ones, you know, um, it talks about, okay, so as you're counting along, how many coins do you have here? And my, my boys both being into coin collecting, uh, that's been fairly simple for them and it's actually helped them before they were into coin collecting to know what was what and how much each coin was worth. Um, greater than, less than, addition. This one is audio again, so I would say a number like 135 and they would have to write it in the correct place value spot. This is the I can do it section. This little triangle here is where they write all their twin and opposite facts here. So they would do one plus six is seven, six plus one is seven, seven take away one is six, seven take away six is one. And so that's what they would write um, down here. So it helps them to learn all of those twin facts and things. 
Each book after 101 has two quizzes and then a test in the middle. So the quizzes look like this. This is book 103. I just leave them in the book. It doesn't, that way everything stays together. Um, there's a part that they may need me to read something to them, like the story problem and some instructional thing. And then they do this on their own. And I don't help them with the tests or quizzes unless they have a question on like what, what the thing is asking. Tess is in the middle of the book here. So it's just a couple pages. That's what the test looks like in 103. There's a little bit more on this side. Right there. In math two, level two, this goes into carrying, borrowing. My son is starting to learn multiplication in um, 206. That's where he's at right now, my oldest son. And I just love the approach of how they do multiplication. They don't just throw out a bunch of facts. They th explain the process and the mentality behind what multiplication means. He thought this was the coolest thing that he got to start writing, you know, the multiplication symbol and everything like that. So uh, it just introduces it very simply. They're ready for it by this point. They've been skip counting for a while. And I thought going into this that it was going to be, it was going to be a struggle and it really hasn't been a struggle at all yet. Here's a sample problem. It's talking about fractions. So they've, they've learned about fractions early on also. I think at the end of level one, he was starting just simple fractions, um, what half is, what one third is, what one quarter was. And now he's doing uh, word problems with fractions. So he has to break them up into groups, how many groups, and then how many, you know, a fraction that is of the group. Um, they've learned conversions. Uh, what, how many hours are in a day, how many minutes are in an hour, how many months are in a year, how many days in a week, how many inches in a yard, how many inches in a foot, how many feet in, an, in a yard, um, how many centimeters in a meter. Just so many things that I'm not sure I knew in second grade, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, he's in third grade, but um, we're on level two, and that's that's fine with me. He is right where he needs to be for... Like I said, they're learning multiplication on this level anyway, so um, that's right where he needs to be. They learn about line segments and some geometry. This is what are the points of the triangle. So starting basic geometry and thermometers and oh, there's just so many good things in here. Um, a line segment, what a ray is, what a line is, different meters, and how to read thermometers, meters, dials, uh, number lines, number lines that count by two, number lines that count by fives, number lines that count by ones, things like that that they can read. Um, and he learned that Fahrenheit counts by two and Celsius counts by one. And I don't know if I ever really realized that because <laughs> I don't really pay attention to Celsius that much. Sorry, uh, those of you across the pond. So, so that was 206. I know I'm kind of jumping around here. Um, I don't have, oh, 201 is actually just like a booklet on review of level one. So it's kind of like quizzes or like an assessment sheet and if they pass that assessment sheet, they move on to the next assessment sheet. But um, my son had finished one, level one, and we moved right into level two. There was no break in between, so I didn't even bother with book 201 for him. So we just started right into book 202. This talks about different ways of writing money with the cent sign or with the dollar decimal point. It talks about digital and analog clocks. I don't know, there's just so many things that he's learning in here that I'm super impressed by um, with this program. If they don't do that well on the test, there are alternate tests. And we've only had to do that once. Um, he didn't know his like counting by fours and threes very well. Just, I knew he could do better. 
And so what I did was I had him practice a few of those things that he needed to work on. And then in the back of the teacher's manual, there are these alternate light unit tests. So it goes for each book, for each book. So this is obviously for math 210, which we're not there yet, but um, so they can take an alternate test and try to, you know, make sure that their score is good enough to move on to the next booklet before getting lost or confused. I forgot to mention also that the teacher's guides have all the answers um, of their worksheets. So this is exactly their workbook pages here so that you can see them, find the answers really easily, and just grade their paper or however you wanna do it, look over it with them and uh, do that. So that is very easy to follow. It has the speed drill answers in here as well for each lesson, which is nice. You can also purchase uh, these flashcards. These are the addition and subtraction flashcards. There's also multiplication and division, but I don't have those yet because we're not quite to our facts, but we're getting there. You can use any other you know, multiplication and division also. These are coded. Um, I don't have them in here as coded. <laughs> They're not organized by any means. Pink for grade two and blue for grade one. Um, they say if you have someone in grade one and grade two that you should have a set for each of them because they are organized completely different. So you have like new facts, unused facts, and facts that you're still working on that you organize them by but it'll tell you to practice this set of math facts as a review and then they'll tell you to practice then this next set of facts that you have behind these little cards um, for each lesson there also is these counting charts that you can purchase I think these are like 99 cents um, it's got 100 to 200 on the back and 0 to or 1 to 100 on the front um, this has been really helpful to circle the skip counting, um, have them just count straight through to 100 and look at the patterns, you know, how a 100's chart works. Um, so now that I've kind of given you like the overview, um, I'm just going to run through like why I love this curriculum. First off, it's very comprehensive. It covers so many different topics. I love the way that they're all introduced. I love that they add in story problems and all these different concepts like early fractions and geometry and um, things like that that you know some people don't even get introduced to until third fourth fifth grade so it has been great i also love how independent it is um i did the good and the beautiful math early on they both did the old kindergarten level and although it was good, it was so, so much parent involvement, so much parental involvement, so many little bits and pieces that you had to pull out and bring. Now, I know that they've revamped it since then, but we haven't gone back to it. Um, it was just so much to do each time we did math. It got to be exhausting, and I didn't even want to do math half the time, or I would skip parts because oh, I have to go get that now? Like, no, I'm not even gonna get up again because I've already been up three times getting the rest of the stuff. Like, it's just too many things. This is so simple, it's so streamlined. It's a book <laughs> and a teacher's guide. Very, very simple, all in one place, all put together, super independent. Like I said, if you go through the, the new things to learn with your child for a few minutes, then they have the I can do it. They can do that all by themselves. And if they have a question, they can come and ask me about something. But um, typically, they go ahead and they just do their math. And it's and it's done, you know? Like, it's just so independent. And the um, second grade is even more independent because by this point, they're assuming that your child can read well or fairly well. And he's able to read most of the directions, most of the... Um, and. Uh, the word problems so I he doesn't even need me for that anymore now if your child still can't read that well that's fine um, just read the word problem for them and any directions that they may need in order to uh, understand what they're supposed to do they can they can teach themselves the new concepts even I mean it's that it's laid out that well 
when they are explaining something. It gives an explanation, it gives an example and things like that, and then a little practice thing for them to work on. So they can literally teach themselves math on their own if, if you want them to. Um, I'm there because I wanna know how they're understanding it, what they're doing, what they're getting, um, and if they have any questions. So I like to be there to teach them the new stuff or at least walk it through with them. If you're a working mom or something like that, you can give your kids their math and they can basically teach themselves math through this. I mean, it's so independent. And you can look on their website and look at some samples of each level and each teacher guide and things like that. Another thing that we love about these is the light unit. There, yes, there are 10 of them, and when you get, you know, the group, I don't know how many I've got here, but all together, when you get the group of them, it might look like a lot, you know. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight <laughs> right here. I mean, sure, that looks like a lot, and the kids are like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of math. But you work one book through at a time, one book at a time. When they complete the book, there's a sense of accomplishment. It just helps them like boost their confidence like they got through an entire book like my kids love looking through that look how much I did and look how exciting that is and they just they really have liked that aspect of it instead of this huge massive single book that just looks like it is going to take forever I mean yes you can see the progress as you go but still you pick up that giant book every time and sometimes it can be a big oh you know um this has just been really, really great. Now, do my kids like this math? My first grader is loving it so far. He loves it. Now, he likes the number lines. He likes the facts. He loves the speed drills. He thinks they're so cool. Of course, I'm sure the novelty of the speed drills may or may not wear off over time. So far, he's loving this. My third grader, he likes it. He's not in love with it, but he has never loved math he's good at it but he's never really loved math um but i am not changing curriculums because this one works this one is amazing and i just love everything about this how just basic but so in depth basic in the sense of like you know it's two colors it's not like super colorful and overwhelming to look at it's just simple but it is so comprehensive, so comprehensive. And he has learned so much through this. He fights me tooth and nail on doing his math every day, but I, that's just his personality. I make him do it because I know how good it is and how good it's, it is for him and how much he's learned. Um, some of the lessons can seem pretty lengthy when you're looking at them, they're like four pages. And I know some people don't have their kids do all of the problems or they don't do the speed drills or this and that but I'm not one of them <laughs> I make them do everything in the lesson um, sometimes I'll say okay you don't have to do the speed drill today depending on how it went or whatever or if he's fighting on me too much but um, the speed drill is like two minutes of your life you know I mean it's just good practice um, so I typically have them do those um, lately in 206 here uh, it is getting more in depth and so he has sometimes done half a lesson in a day and then we'll do the other half the next day and I'm okay with that I mean it's not my it's not my preferred I would prefer to him to do a whole lesson at a time but sometimes the fight isn't worth it and he's still doing his math and I'm not stuck to a time frame where he has to be done with math 2 in May like that's that's not anything that I'm worried about um we just continue on we homeschool year-round so uh we take a little bit of a break in the summer I'm okay with him like you know pushing this into the beginning of his fourth grade I, it doesn't it doesn't bother me um I don't think he will because he's almost done with 206 so there's four more books and there's like 20 lessons in each book um 60 80 more like, yeah it might go a little bit longer than um may but that, that's okay I, i'm okay with that so yeah the price the variety the concepts that are taught the comprehension that's taught the independence that it is that it has 
the sense of accomplishment for each um, booklet and I just and the ease of teaching it really I mean it's it's very simple to teach I plan to stick with this through their entire elementary um, career. So I hope you found this video helpful. Hopefully I wasn't too all over the place. There was just a lot of things in my head that were uh, going on and I wanted to get across. So if you found this helpful, uh, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. I've got more homeschool videos that I will link down below. My mid-year curriculum update if you want to see what else we are using. Leave a comment below and let me know what your favorite math curriculum is. Have you tried CLE? Did it work for you? I know that not every math is going to work for everybody, but this one is the one that we're sticking with and we really enjoy it. So thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time. Bye.